Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and in this video we're going to be talking about this new study that may have actually created a little bit of a problem for physics. In discovering that when it comes to three orbiting black holes, it creates a paradox. A paradox we can't really explain. So let's talk a little bit more about this and welcome to What The Math. Now before we go into black holes and before we go into understanding what the study is about, I need to briefly mention the so-called idea of arrow of time or time symmetry. So when it comes to time, the idea of time, in physics we believe that it can actually be reversed. It can either go forward or it can go backwards, which in some sense I guess is not really difficult to imagine. What is however difficult is identifying which way is time flowing. For example, right here in this simulation, can you actually tell if this is running forward in time or if this is running backwards? There's actually no way for us to tell because everything that's happening here could technically be going either way. But one way of identifying what uh, the direction of time is, is by introducing the idea of entropy. Now this is a really complex topic we're not really going to cover in this video, mostly because there's a lot of things to talk about, but entropy is the fundamental law of physics, the second law of thermodynamics specifically, that explains the arrow of time in terms of chaos. Basically with time, the universe should be increasing in entropy or chaos as opposed to decrease. So in other words, today the idea of heat transfer, or going from hot to cold, is essentially explained as the transfer of entropy or the increase of entropy in the universe. So going back to our original simulation here, we can actually see which way the entropy is flowing to determine if this is going backwards in time or forwards in time. So here, if I were to place the moon much closer to Earth, because of the tidal interactions between the moon and the Earth, if this is going backwards in time, we should see a lot more order. But since this is going forward in time and not backwards, you can see that the entropy is increasing and the moon is becoming more and more disorganized. So this is one of the ways of determining the so-called direction of the arrow of time. And here, even every explosion is adding even more entropy to the planet and to the system as a whole. But that's a very simple way of explaining this, and in reality, the concept of entropy is a lot more complex. But it is fundamental, which is of course why we always believed that the time is also symmetrical or reversible. But we also had some unusual phenomena that we've discovered that could not be explained with symmetrical time. One of them is in regards to black holes. The most famous concept here is of course the idea of information paradox. So the way it goes is as follows. Let's say that you as a person or whatever your book or your laptop that possesses information and knowledge is slowly falling into the black hole. And essentially at some point it's going to cross the event horizon and we know that nothing can escape the black hole. Which of course means that um, essentially it goes in and kind of slowly gets destroyed. So all of the information from your laptop, about your laptop, and of course if you were falling with your laptop, about you as well, is now technically gone forever. Basically, it's gone into the black hole. But this violates the principle of time symmetry, because as I just mentioned, most of the physical concepts depend on the idea that you can reverse time and go backwards. Essentially, we should be able to reverse time and if we were to go back in time, see that your laptop and you with your laptop and whatever else fell into the black hole is now recreated back as it used to be. But this is not something we can do with black holes because by definition and by design, they don't seem to contain any information in them. They don't seem to contain any information about the structure of your, for example, uh, particles that you made off. And so all of this information, if you were to fall into the black hole, would be lost. So this is what we, in a nutshell, call the um, information paradox. And even today, it's still kind of unresolved, mostly because we've always taken this time symmetry for granted. And it actually does, of course, make sense because, well, technically, by looking at the events today and at various um, things happening in the universe, we're able to work backwards and understand what happened in the past. So that's the idea of time symmetry or time reversal in a nutshell. But now, scientists whose paper you can find in the description below discovered another unusual phenomenon that seems to violate this time symmetry yet again. And it does involve black holes once again. This paper right here actually decided to investigate things a little bit differently, using computers. And the idea here was actually not too complex. Take three really massive black holes, or the simulation of these black holes, and place them in orbit around one another, having uh, the simulation run for a very long time, but also at the same time 
once in a while stop the simulation and then reverse the time to see if there was any difference in what was originally created. If we were to use this as an example, they ran the simulation once this way, forward time, and then they reversed the time to see if the final result of the reverse time simulation was exactly the same as the original result from the first simulation. In other words, they were testing for time symmetry. But unlike in this simulation that we have here, which only has two bodies, which is relatively easy to calculate, this is Newtonian physics, they chose a three-body simulation. As of today, unfortunately, the three-body problem has not actually been solved. It does not have a general solution that can apply to everything, mostly because with time the system becomes way too complex and amount of chaos that's introduced with every interaction increases exponentially to the point where it becomes ridiculously difficult to predict. Here's actually one of the last papers I was able to find that tries to find a solution to some of the more complex um, three-body simulations. But even here, if we were to apply this to, for example, the solar system, we could only really calculate what would happen to the system up to about a million years maximum. So as an example, let's take these three Earths, place them around one another, disable collisions, and see what happens to their orbits. Here, as they start orbiting around one another, the actual orbits will become more and more chaotic with time. It's going to be extremely difficult to predict what's going to happen with these three planets in approximately 5 minutes from now, not to mention 5 years or million years. So this is why the three-body problem is still one of the most sort of fundamental unresolved problems in orbital dynamics. And this is kind of what they did but with three black holes, mostly because it allowed them to use much more massive bodies. But in this model, they also introduced the idea of chaos. So here, because of the length of the interaction, as these bodies orbited around one another more and more, they essentially started to produce more and more chaotic interactions. And the amount of this chaos is represented right here, starting from the smallest possible length, which is the Planck length, the smallest possible distance in the universe, and eventually with time, as the time progressed, you'll notice that the actual interaction here will get even more chaotic, increasing the deviation exponentially. And it's going to be seen in this simulation on the right as the kind of a white line that will start appearing as the simulations deviate from one another more and more. And here, after approximately 30 to 35 million years, the actual uh, deviation becomes already size of planet Earth. And you'll see that this will actually cause visible differences within about 35 to 40 million years after the initial simulation. And so this is really important because what this essentially shows us is that within a three-body simulation, just a simple natural simulation that occurs everywhere in the universe, with time due to simple chaos and unpredictability of what's going to happen in the future, we're going to reach a very similar idea to the information paradox. The arrow of time becomes irreversible or if you were to reverse it, you would actually end up in a completely different situation from what you expected. Which in their simulation is visible with the red and white color. So the red is the original simulation, white is what ended up happening after the time was reversed. And that unfortunately creates a huge problem for physics, because currently we don't really know how to explain any of this. A lot of the uh, modern physics, a lot of the fundamental physics depends on the idea of time reversibility or time symmetry, so time has to be reversible. Entropy, by definition, is defined as time that can be reversed. But if in reality, because of the entropy itself, because of the chaos itself, time becomes irreversible, we're gonna have to um, rework some of the physics and that unfortunately is not really that easy. Now I'm sure more follow-up studies will probably introduce some of the explanation here. Right now there is really none. It seems that the scientists behind this paper do think that this is a natural fundamental problem that's caused by the chaos itself. The chaos of the universe and various chaotic systems that are formed when you have a three-body simulation. And fundamentally what this of course means is that it's almost impossible to predict what really happened in the past. And even though originally I thought that maybe it was the simulation, maybe it was because of the actual um, computer simulation they used and the limitations of the computer itself, other studies that use a similar simulation to, for example, uh, try to mimic the orbit of comet Halley or to use it for some other similar predictions did actually establish that this is an extremely accurate simulation with the main errors being the general chaos of the orbital parameters themselves. In other words, it's nothing to do with the simulation as much as the universe itself having these chaotic errors that are introduced with time. Now, we do need to have a lot of follow-up studies, of course, and we do need to actually have a more, um, I guess in some sense, acceptable explanation to what's happening here. But right now, the way that it seems, 
is that the Arrow of Time is probably not symmetrical after all, at least because of the chaos introduced through various systems. And it also suggests that trying to see back in time and to recreate something with extreme precision becomes basically impossible, simply because of the nature of the universe and all of the chaos that makes this a practically impossible task to achieve. And this is exactly what this paper is trying to explain in a nutshell. And the more particles we get, the more unpredictable it becomes. And this unpredictable behavior seems to be the foundation of the universe itself, which of course only means that we can know the universe only to some extent. We can unfortunately never really know what exactly happened back in the days, or more specifically, we can never really certainly know something in the future either. All of this chaos makes things completely unpredictable with time. So in other words, what all of this means is that the universe has a limit in accuracy. And so what Black Holes have actually taught us so far is that it seems that uncertainty is the only certainty. But anyway, once we discover more about what's really happening with this unusual phenomenon that was just discovered, I'll come back and make sure to talk about this a little bit more in some of the future videos. Subscribe if you still haven't, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, and come back tomorrow to learn something you may have not known before. Maybe also consider supporting this channel on Patreon as we're following into this black hole, and potentially also consider supporting this channel by buying the beautiful t-shirt that has a black hole on it, the wonderful person t-shirt I'm wearing right now as well. Anyway, I'll see you tomorrow, space out, and as always, bye-bye.